A very warm welcome to the Medalla Light Puerto Rico Temple Open here in San Juan. Ran by Predator and CSI, Q Sports International. We have a very good first round matchup here between Jesus Atencio and Joven Bustamante. In the commentary booth, we have Eric Corlifson and myself, Tim De Reuter. So, what do you think here? Eric? Pleasure to join you guys again. Yeah, it's, we have a, we're in for a treat here in the first round. Two players that are just below the uh, the very high upper echelon of players, but both very capable players. Um, Atencio is coming in with maybe a bit more of the talent advantage, and Bustamante is coming in with a bit more of the veteran advantage. Bustamante's had some good results lately, uh, finishing fifth in the Michigan Open and making it to the final 16 of the Bull Carbon event. A really interesting safety shot here. This is not a shot you see very often. I think he's got it. But he, yeah, lots of traffic in the middle on this rack. Going to be playing all around that for the first few shots probably. Yeah, Jesus breaking from the center. We've seen him in practice doing the same thing. I know he's got a bigger break, but still choosing to have just a pop and try to make the balls in the side. Trying to find some cover, but yeah. found the four. Still going to be interesting how this rack is going to evolve because now getting from the one to the two to get back on the three, and then if you get straight on the three, it's difficult with the four. There's so there's a track up the right side of the table if he means maintains angle to the right here. Yeah, originally from the Philippines, Jovan Bustamante, living in I believe Arizona. He is, yeah. And uh, has been playing, he's been stepping it up a little bit. A lot of people have a lot of expectations from him. He just, you know, he's a working man. <laughs> like he doesn't get the opportunities like other players but he uh, I feel he's very capable of doing more than he does yeah is he involved with a room out there or do you know I don't think actually think so he's just uh, I think he's like a nurse also oh, okay. like he completely different from pool but so he did get a good angle on the three he's playing good angles so far now, if he can get close to straight on the five, he would open up the whole rack. Yeah, a tough part of this rack's done, but you're right. Getting a good angle on the five is going to be contingent on the rest of the rack. Player's still getting used to the speed of the table here, first round match. Got a little bit more angle on the five. If he drops it in, he can shoot the six in the top left corner in this field. Or does it go to the side? I'm guessing it does. Yeah, yeah. He's okay to play the cue ball down to the short rail here, and he's in good position now. Don't forget, these are short races, guys. We're back to the best of three race to four format. If both sets, if the first two sets tie, we go to a shootout to determine the winner. It's 106 players starting here. 32 will advance to the single knock knockout redraw. Yeah, we have a total prize fund for the whole week is half a million dollars. Yeah, big Great. money on offer as usual from Predator. Yeah, we also have the World Team Championship. I believe it's starting tomorrow. It is, yeah. So, so much action still to come and I'm excited to see again the best players in the world. Absolutely. It looks like Joe Van is going to Win the first game here and nice run on. I mean, doesn't look too nervous. Yeah, pretty good start. Flowed through the rack nicely. Got some small angles that he required. Didn't really get in much trouble over the course of the rack. It's a winner breaks format here, but as we've seen in previous Predator tournaments, the break isn't necessarily as a big of an advantage. 
Yeah, so we are playing hand rack, wrecked by the referee Temple. There is early combos are allowed to win the game, just not the Temple on the break. And of course we're playing cost shot, so have to call whatever you're doing, unless it's obvious. So interested, during practice Joven was breaking from the side rail. In this format I really like breaking from the side, trying to make the one. Yeah, you're protecting yourself too, right? It's a, you know, it's a short race, so it, uh, I think you know mo most of the players over the course of the events have gone to the side rail. The execution of the break from the middle is tougher too, so you know, you, to even consider it, you'd have to be a very talented player. Well, it's also really difficult to to judge the wreck. Mm -hmm. Oh, one flew in the corner there. Well, that happens sometimes when it's going towards the side; it can get kicked towards the corner. I think it might actually have turned quite okay he's gonna run into the eight he's gonna open up the four and using the eight he can leave the three in the side possibly if he plays top spin yeah three's nice and close to the two so he won't have to hit it too hard just gonna have to figure out what part of the eight he wants to hit here to get good position on the three yeah don't play especially on the new slick cloth don't play too much top spin on this because the cue is gonna go wanting to go more forward and it's gonna stick with the eight over rotate yeah Yeah, so probably play just a hair of top spin and oh he's gonna draw his way out of it i i like it i would be scared oh Ooh. i mean i'm was trying to make it yeah I, I was gonna miss. say yeah but then again he's a filipino player in general they really like the old conditions and it has more deflection mm -hmm. so especially the arcadia club it stays long really slidey like it stays slidey and right. ball over swerved on i don't think it's gonna change in the next five six seven days maybe so yeah, yeah it's tough to judge how it's gonna bend yeah we're in tropical conditions here it's very humid and warm outside Nice and cool in the arena, though. I feel they are handling the conditions pretty well. Yesterday we had huge rain. And still players said, oh, the tables are playing good inside. Because air conditioning is working really well and it's managing the tables. So, yeah, We're in a beautiful multi-million dollar venue here, the Puerto, Rican, Puerto Rico Convention Center. Yeah, got hooked on the three. Has good opportunities here. I was going to say if he catches this side but a little bit thicker, there was some good things that could happen. Left it in the open, though. If he has the drawing angle to come between the 4-8, he'll be a good favorite in this rack. That's what he's looking at right now. I, th I think he's got a perfect angle, too. He's left himself. If you play one good speed, you should be all right here. Oh, he got behind oh, he the put eight, unless oh, he's going maybe up just speed. enough. No, he no didn't good. get there. Yeah, he was for sure trying to get in between. He just drew the cue ball a little bit too much. Yeah, it kind of looked like the angle was lying right in between it, but he ended up drawing it more. Yeah, I'm just situation wondering. situation for a jump. Yeah, I think you have to jump too. Yeah. Like there's not so much you can do kicking at it. Cue ball's close to the rail here. Got to be careful you don't jump the rail, but it's a nice quick poke. I think you just have to land pretty much in between the cloth and the four. Mm -hmm. Like, you really have to be pretty full on it. He's elevating a lot. Oh, miscued. Yeah, I feel that was more of a miscue than he actually... Had to be. Cue ball didn't even leave the bed of the table there. So, first chance for Atencio. The only good thing for Joven is he didn't really tie up the eight, but he made the eight a lot more difficult. If he left it for the side, it would be guaranteed over almost. Yeah. Now there is some work to do. Ooh. They don't want to be <laughs> queuing over the seven there. Still, if he shoots a six in the top left, might open he it could up here. Could open it up. Could also choose to go two rails off the seven for the eight in the corner. Yeah. So there's a couple things. I with the angle he has, I think I would like to nudge the right side of the of the nine. 
now. Central angle didn't lie into it. He's okay to come across here as well. Yeah, both very natural kind of style. Don't really think too much. Yeah, I've they always... have a big feel for the table in general. Yeah, I've always felt like Atencio is one of the most promising players on tour, and he's had some strong results. Just looking for him to really break out and kind of get to the final or even win a tournament. Just kind of a test to how tough it is to win these tournaments. You know, the guy's a great player and has had some strong results, but just not quite near the end. Yeah, I just feel at some point he started to travel a little bit less. I less overseas, yeah. you know, more just U.S. tournaments. And then, you know, he wasn't. Yeah, how do you say it? Just got he wasn't out of the stepping mix a it up. Like he didn't really mix himself with the best. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I can think of, really. Mm -hmm. So he levels the score one each. Yeah, it was a good opportunity for Joven to take early 2-0 lead. And like you said, is we're playing races to four. Of course, it's set. So if you think about it in the long run, it's not going to really affect the way they play. But... Still, you know, you're going to play so much different if you're up 2-0 than if you're tying the score one each, two each. It's going to be way different. Yeah, every game in each set is important here. So we are using all Predator equipment here on the Pro Buried Series Tour. The Predator Apex 9-foot table. Predator Arena lights, still love the lights, they're still my favorite. I say this every two of them, I just, they're my favorite by far. The Arcadia Reserve Cloth, the Arcos Two Balls, Predator Arrow Wreck, and the Predator Bridges. Let's see, breaking from the center. I hope he, he puts a little bit more into this though. Yeah. Last time I didn't like it that much. Perfect he hit. A, like he, he has a solid hit, just. I feel he will have to do a little bit more. It's like a 60% overall speed of what he's capable of. Trying to control it a little more than M power. M maybe less. I think he has way bigger break than this. Sure. And especially playing hand wreck, you cannot, you know, if you wreck them s your, your own, you know, okay, with this pop, like some balls might be leaving, but he's gambling here, what he's trying to do. Yeah. A little lucky to leave the two ball close and not have a shot on the one. Yeah, it's kind of like when you saw Catchy go from the middle and win the World 10 Ball Championships. He, he really let it out, right? He really put all his power into the break, and I think that's, I think you're right. It is, it is more advisable if you're going to go from the middle, just kind of go for it. Yeah, for example, Shane, he won the World 8 Ball, but he made many balls that were... You know, he wasn't expecting to make those balls on the break, but just because he was breaking with such a good impact, mm -hmm. he, that's what made him a winner. So if you have this break, why not use it? Yeah. I like what he's doing. I think you have to take a shot to just bang the one. There was six balls. Oh, he's playing the soft way. Not a huge fan of this shot, but he had so many balls down table, he had to try at least to get cover. He was just worried about the scratch into the left corner pocket if he went that route, but I definitely hear you that should be favoring playing towards the bigger walls. I think he got the save. Yeah, he's going to have to kick at this. No real pockets for the one. Looks like he's actually calling the 10. I just, there is not really many outs here. I would not know if he can what get to the top side of it and start drawing it. I was going to say maybe happen. kick the one over to the two six. A lot of outside spin. Hit it more yeah, squarely. Th this way he was most likely to leave something on the one. The good thing is he didn't call the one and he's left Jovan hooked. So Jovan's giving it back and he's for sure going to have a more open look on the two unless Jesus can make something happen here. Yeah. And I know he's a great jumper. He's one of the best jumpers in the game. So I wouldn't be too surprised if he makes a 2-6 combo. I, I wouldn't. Oh, I was going to say, that looked really good. Look how he's got on the two as well. 
Well, first offensive opening of the rack for Bustamante here. Yeah, the main thing on this layout was getting on the three and well, he's a little bit, I feel he's a little bit unfortunate not to make the jump and leave Joven with such a good chance to get on the three ball early. From here, just one reel out, four in the top left corner. Played a little bit more speed. He likes to play a little bit more pace in general. He's not too scared, I feel. So top right corner in this view. Needs some angle to get to the six, so a little stun. Can't play too much draw. Yeah, just wanted to maintain, maintain angle going to the left here. He did that well. Now the seven, it looks very easy. The seven is really close to the side. If you get a more bigger angle on the seven or angle running towards the eight, you have to play the bump, which could be really tough. So the more straight he gets on the seven, the better in this case. I think he might be just okay to draw out of trouble here. Maybe even roll through it. Oh, he played the bump. It's fine. It's very controllable. Good shot. Until now, I feel Joven has a little bit more control going in this rack. He's playing with nice pace and confidence, too. He's used to this format. He's played in many Predator Pro Series events. Jesus has played in his fair share as well. Yeah, 2-1. Joven Bustamante. Yeah, always, we always have many Philippine players playing the Pro Beard Series events. Also of the likes of Carlo Biado is here. Uh, Roland Garcia is here. And the women's division, Cheska Centeno, our World Temple champion. Um, also Rubelena Mitt is here. So they usually show up in packages on, in this tour. Yeah, they're going to be a team to look out for in the, in the team yeah. event for sure. Taiwan's coming in with a very, Chinese Taipei's coming in with a very strong team as a well. Asia is going to be really interesting to watch. Um, I also feel Austria yes. is a nice outsider. To be honest, the, the UK, even though Darren Appleton might be you know, a little bit less in form because he hasn't been playing so much, mm -hmm. but he's got so much experience, and f uh, Phil Burford is a great substitute. Yeah, maybe not a household name, but whenever he has played, he's done he very well. He's very, very capable, yeah. yeah. So with Kelly Fisher, you know, why not? I give them some good chances, so... And, of course, we have outsiders like the USA. They do have a chance if April Larson gets everything together. So there is some countries that could be ups like upsetting the field. Just feel Asia is coming really strong. Yeah, Husband and wife combo with Josh and Pia on the same team, playing with Moritz. Yeah. Made the one in the side there. That's what he's going for. Oh, and look at this result. Just a nine ball last second blocking the two ball for the bottom right. We'll have to play this in the bottom left and it's more difficult to get on the three. Yeah, I However, I do like cutting and go into the rail and bump the three from here. Yeah, and, and I think it's possible to stay below it as well and just shoot it in the long pocket. It's bordering on having maybe a little too much angle, but I think you can slow it down. Yeah, it's going to depend on if he's really wanting to let the stroke out a little bit more or he's going to play the soft draw or the soft stun. Or can he go around the three? I don't, from this angle, it looks like he won't be able to go around. This good. Held he it played nicely. the soft stun, yeah. Okay, so maybe he got a little straighter on the three than he wanted to. Calling the eight, I'm surprised. He's called the eight? Three doesn't pass the ten, I guess. I'm surprised he would have played it like that if the three doesn't pass the I ten. I wouldn't go playing the combo here. Surprised. Yeah, I ran a little bit further. I not too sure about this shot. Unless the three didn't go to the corner. Then uh, I do understand. Yes. He was trying to hold it well. Uh, do you think he could have played with more pace? 
Yeah, I mean, if he had a plan to play the combo from the beginning and just didn't want to move the three, it was it was a good overall plan, but it just seemed the way he was playing it, he was going to pocket the, the three directly. Can hide the three behind the ten here, just thinly. Take the cue ball up to the short rail. Yeah, there is a scratch. So, needs the perfect speed on the three. Cue ball was not going to get to a rail, so that's why he needed to get the three to hit the bumped rail. And he did have a good result. I'm just saying, I was going to say... I'm not sure what he's looking at here. I was gonna say, if he hits everything on the left side of the three, it's gonna cause him to have pretty good results. Mm -hmm. I don't think the three is gonna leak out. Yeah, the 10 can stop the movement of the three, and the three, if he does that, the three's stopping in a pretty strong spot for him. He's gonna go at this two rails. But he he looked like he was gonna try and hit it thicker. I noticed. And that's what I'm not too sure about in this situation. It's no, he shot. played played it good. Nice shot. Played it exactly how he was trying, but I I, I knew I saw what you were saying about eyeing it up thicker there. Yeah. Also, it was really tough to get the hook on this shot, so he. You know, I w I would take this really for a result in the in the spot he was at. Sure. I did like it. Is he gonna try just bring the three over to the six, or is he gonna get the cue ball behind the five? Caught the double kiss. I'm not. I think he was trying to get behind five. He was, yeah. It's always so tough when the ball you're playing safe on is close to the rail like that. Always a bigger risk of a double kiss. All pocketing here. Just slow roll this one in. Yeah, that's also. I I spoke with you before the match. I, what I do like about Jesus' style is that he plays very full stroke. Mm -hmm. I just feel sometimes he needs a little bit more soft speed and a little bit more spin, like more finesse. Like now he took the gamble to get the bump on the four, and if he misses the bump, he didn't have a shot. Right. It looked like a slow roll, and I understand why he tried to hit it with more speed. He, it, it's it's going to increase his pocketing percentage, but... You know, having the finesse to maybe slow roll that one, shots like that. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I could imagine him holding back, you know, from the big stage. Mm -hmm. Still, he's got a decent chance. I think he might have to run into the six also. Oh, he's played this really good. Yeah, I could see a very loose grip there. Uses his wrist a little bit. Good timing in his stroke. Yeah, he's also known for... <laughs> The double jump. Yeah. You know, he's very known to play those kind of shots. Creative shots. But then also he has a really big stroke, obviously, with such a good timing, you know, like loose grip. The type of player that I think if he gets confident, he's very dangerous. He's dangerous regardless, but I mean, I'm, I'm talking about dangerous could, could to be, win the whole turn. Yeah, could be yeah. way more. And I think also if he gets to last 16 quarterfinal, I think it could be increasing him. Right. Most of the players, they get a little bit less when they get further in the tournament. I think it would be actually pushing him to get there. I agree. Yeah. No, it looks like we're going to be two each here. Yeah, close opening set. I mean, we're in for something exciting here, I think so. I mean, it looked like Joven is really comfortable. It's just some safety shots which were surprising. Um, but on the other side, it looks like Jesus flew into this match. Like, he's swinging at basically everything he had. Yeah, that's his style. So really. He'll be ready to go, for sure. So I'm... I'm feeling we're in, so far still, we're two each. I think it's still 50-50. Mm -hmm. It's tough to call a winner. Close within Fargo at the beginning of the match, too, both around the 780 range. Mm -hmm. 
women's event will get underway later this afternoon. I believe the first women's matches are at 3.30 Central, or Atlantic time. Yeah, if you look at just the Puerto Rico Open, not even counting the World Team Championship, it already has a pro total price run of $200,000. I believe also in the teams, everybody that has entered already got their entry fee back. That's great. Yeah. Like, it was just their travel expenses, which, I mean, I think is great opportunities. Following the lead of all other pro sports, the ev everyone gets something. Yeah. So... Now, he did switch to the side, which I like, because he obviously knew, okay, from breaking from the center, nothing happened. But I just feel there is no energy at all. He in the held break. off a little bit. Yeah. Again. Yeah, it popped it nicely. But if you look at, we've seen his grip. We've seen his timing. So I would expect him to have a killer, like a really big break. Yeah, he can't hit it much harder for sure. It's yeah. Uh, that, that, that's just the strategy he's going with for now. But, you know, as we've seen over the course of these Predator tournaments, it's, it's the ability to adapt as well, right? You know, have three or four breaks that can work for you. And just end up sticking with the one that's making the most balls. He's got to play the combo here. The, the two ball is going to be tracking the wrong way off the five. See how he can control it. I was going to say he did get it to the corner because he nudged the three. I was maybe thinking about letting the stroke out. Kind of Maybe like bring the cue ball around three rails and just open the two. Yeah, good controlled play there though. Tried to play off both balls, hit it well. He needs another good shot. I don't think he gets to the top side of the three. Maybe he can draw his way out. I might draw just again full stroke into the three and open it up. But I was gonna go a lot of draw. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was forced to go into the three there. Didn't quite get it where he's in a good pocketing position here. Quite yeah. sure what he was looking at he's there. He's wanting to make the three in the corner. I just feel the scratch is really close. And if he beats the scratch, he's not going to get on the four. Mm -hmm. He's going forward. It's too much energy in the cue ball. Yeah. yeah. Unless he Soft hits the side pocket it. point. Yes, yeah, so like something. playing the point. Yeah. It's so sensitive. I might not play this. Nudge the three to the long reel just besides the side and trying to get the cue ball behind the eight. Yeah, something like this. I. I just don't see value unless he goes for it with top spin and goes two rails come back out or something really aggressive. Just feel it's a really tough one. This yeah, you play the point what and shot. It is it gonna there. get there? Wow, oh. that's a tough roll there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was so sensitive. Like it actually, he put in a good effort. Uh, it sounds really rude, but he put in a really great effort. Did as well as he could, but just 1% off the pro proper result there. Also, playing this shot, he knew if you don't make it, you sell out. Yeah. Watch out for the side here. He's in. Tough roll there. Good pure stroke with the cue ball coming back. Just misjudged the angle a little bit. So Bust Monty's in a good, very solid ball in hand position here with six balls left. I mean, pretty unexpected to see him back at the table. Yeah, three just got in a spot where you never want to draw straight out of the corner like that, but it was so deep in the corner that he had no other option. Got, you know, hit it well, just started tracking towards the side. So, Basmane in good line here to be up 3 2 in the. Well, he's looking to set. go on the hill also. Yeah. And we all obviously know the first set is extremely important if you can win the first set you're guaranteed to go to a shootout of course you're not playing to get into the shootout but you have a backup it's definitely a strong mental advantage going into the second yeah set. 
also everybody that wins the first set is kind of a favorite to win the second one because it hurts your opponent so much. So a little bit of back and forth here in the first five racks. No real glaring mistakes, but no perfect racks as well. have the CSI League event going on this week. Close to around a thousand players in that event. Something, you know, it's a beautiful location here. It's something for all players all around the world to consider. Yeah, and not just the country itself too. Like I really like the convention center as well. You know, there's a lot of space, there's a lot of tables. We last year we had Francisco Sanchez Ruiz winning the World Eight Ball. The crowd was unreal. Yeah, it's it was huge. And, oh, that's something most of the people wouldn't expect. But in Puerto Rico, they're really a big fan of sports. They really follow sports. Like, so there's many fans here, which you wouldn't expect for a small island. I actually noticed on the local TV when I was just flipping through the, the channels, there was a, at least 10 sports channels. So, yeah, sporting's a big thing in this country. So, Joe Van Breaking. He's up 3-2. He's on the hill. Hit it well. Hit it nice and square. Ten ball goes. Doesn't count, but he's right on the one. Yeah, the only thing, the two ball got a little nasty. Mm -hmm. Just wondering, can he go forward to get to the bottom side of the two in this field? Might be enough angle going to the left where he can just play it across one rail as well. Okay. Yeah, one of the risks was with the sliding cloth, the spin is going to open a lot. That's why he ran into the four. Could have been way worse if he gets more straight on the two on the rail. Could be awkward now. He can play a similar shot going around two rails and get out to the middle. He could also go forward just one rail and come back out to the center of the table. Just a hair of inside. Just make sure you don't get behind the six. Well, got a little bit in between, or is it going to... A little bit in between. Yeah, I think he'll stay offense here. Definitely more angle than what he would have wanted, but... I think I would go three reels also. Short reel, long reel, and short reel. Just come back out. Just to let the stroke go. Like, you don't want to s baby this. I feel sometimes also, you know, especially playing leagues or older tables, the ball is going to drift. Oh, he even played with inside. I, I like what he's done here. Yeah, play the more aggressive option there. Generally, when, when the pocketing's tougher, you want to lean towards hitting it closer to a medium speed rather than babying the ball. Now, are you going to try and get extremely close to the five, or are you just going to take the medicine and get to something of a shot? It's tough because, oh, it goes on the side. He's good. It looked like it was too close to the side rail to play the side there, but he's definitely playing the side from that play. Yeah, it's just some players are always, especially in shots like this, they're trying to get extremely close, and sometimes you just have to play a little awkward shot. Like, he just played like it was not a gimme. Yeah, avoiding the trouble, right? Like, not getting too close to the eight there. So, good look here to finish out the first set for Bustamante. Play around two ra two or three rails here. Might favor the three rails because he'd be taking the stun out of the equation. Three rails possibly into the fourth rail. Could also stun at two rails, his his choice. I think you have to go around the ten three rails. It's the most natural way. Watch out for he, the 10. But he played with a lot of top spin. Yeah. I think they curved it long. Yeah, I think the, I think the top spin over like caught more than he was expecting there. I think he was trying to go to the left of the nine, 
but just got kind of straight into the second rail. Now, I do understand if he doesn't want to baby this eight, so I might play with low left and shoot the nine in the side. Just to get the stroke out, you can play pocket speed, and as long as you don't play too much crazy draw, you're not going to get behind the ten. Well, he killed it. I yeah, mean, nice kill there. That's what, that's what I'm saying. He looks more comfortable. Like, he really got out swing, swinging. And it's the finesse shots that's saving him this this set so far. Yeah, purposely played the thicker part of the pocket there. Strong opening set from Bustamante. Yep. So it's Jovan Bustamante. He wins the first set for two. And looks like Jesus Atencio is taking a little break. Obviously trying to break the momentum a little bit. just wondering you know if I were to be Jesus I would be wondering you know did I really make mistakes or like like did I do would you feel he played a bad set or Not you feel really. he didn't really underachieve I, I don't think so yeah he the biggest mistake was when he drew the, the, the cue ball off the three and scratch in the side but that, that's kind of a bad roll as well if I were him, I'd, I'd, I'd take your advice, and I would think about hitting the break harder. I, he has the. I think it's to only it. the break. Yeah. I really think if he starts making up on balls on the break, I think it could completely flip over. Like it could be so much different. Shane Van Boning's playing his opening round. He's been on a real hot streak lately. Winning the ten-foot event at the International Open, World Eight Ball champion. Yeah, a couple really interesting opening rounds. I also know one of USA's or Korea, yeah, multi Q Sport talents, Kang Lee, also is playing high level Karim, three cushion billiards. He was playing France finest Alex Montpellier in the first round, which I think is a really tough draw for both. I see Gerson Martinez beat Jose Alberto Delgado in a shootout style earlier this morning. Alan Rolon Rosado, one of the local heroes, he won his first match over Juan Rosa Mendez. I don't know the fine gentleman, but he Would obviously came here to compete, so. Would you say Rolon is the strongest player from Puerto Rico? Is that a fair statement? I think so I haven't I, I don't know all of him obviously yeah I just know that he's been mixing also playing world 10 ball he's been playing world 8 ball last year so he's been he's been putting himself out there yeah he's been on the world scene for yeah. about 15 years very experienced player um, also interesting match Davy Pier Giovanni from Italy is playing Dimitris Lucatos Pier Giovanni who is not so known but is pretty known in my country because he used to stay like a couple months a year in the Netherlands to practice you know with for example Alex Laley okay so which is interesting he's now up making his way out to major tournaments now yeah yeah he's trying to find a gap he lost the first set 4-3 and is now up 2-1 so looks like it's a pretty close match Also interesting, Michael Jednak beat Lohu Sam 2-0 in sets. Good win for Jednak. It's, it's good. an interesting result for sure. Uh, we have got, we're going to have so many more action coming. We have Pius Labutis, great player from Lithuania. He's playing against arguably the best wheelchair player in the world, Henrik Larsson from Sweden. Nice. Uh, there is some good match. Also, Sullivan Clark from New Zealand. He's playing Michael Ugard from, now I'm showing it out. I think it's Denmark. Okay. He's a very timid guy and has a really solid style. 
I used to play with him in European Junior Championships. So known him for a long time. Is a really good matchup in the first round. So we have quite some good early matches. Yeah, world class field here. Gonna be some great competition all week as always. So Jesus started the first set breaking. That's why Jovan is starting the second set. He came up dry. He really cut that break. Yeah, a lot. cut it a little more there. Not sure if he was trying to, but a couple that he did hit square. He made the one on the side twice or once. So I think he kind of missed the contact point a little bit there. The main thing is getting on the two. It's difficult. I think I would be going in between the four or five. Two rails. Yeah, it's not I think one you have to gamble getting on the two. Like, you know you're not going to get straight in on the two or perfect. But you still have to try. If you hook yourself behind the four, you can tell yourself, well, I had to try to get on the two. Like, there, there's no easy way. You see, you played with double pays. I, I like what he's done here. Sure. It's just another one of those shots that you don't want to slow roll. At first look, you would think, oh, okay, I can slow roll it and just play into the angle. But... The percentages of pocketing when you're playing at that speed and that difficult of a pot just go way down. Rack's lying okay, especially if the four passes the five, which it looks like it does. Well, it's a little tighter. Yeah, it's a little tighter. I might have to go to the other side. He it didn't get there. Got in the middle. Yeah, it does pass the five, but... Tough cue ball control here because the cue uh, ball is tracking to shoot it to the, the top right. Yeah, I have to move the cue ball, but it's it's kind of natural. You cut, you go, probably two rails. If he stuns it, it goes three rails. But I don't like the, the stun. Probably top left, you go two rails out. Great shot, oh, good recovery. Oh, the cue ball. Oh, he's made something happen there. It was a big big risk. Yeah, I mean, everybody's off on speed a little bit. I'm not saying I'm not saying that he couldn't be off there, but shots like that are just a little surprising. Like, how do you get close to the nine there, you know? Like, missing the ball maybe, but just kind of, you would think he would overhit the speed a little bit more there. Like, he, it's not, you know, he, so much of a chance of getting behind the nine the way he played it. Played a really good shot on the five. Sure. Like, cue ball wise, he couldn't have done any better Two good recovery shots, and he's right back in line now. Yeah, I really needs to make something happen this set. Jesus Atencio. Chose to go to the bottom side of the eight. Yeah. I was thinking going to the center of the table. He wanted to get closer and to that one. I'm just wondering, from this screen, it really looks like he has a really tough cut. It could be a little bit better if we have a different view. But to cut this, he will have to run into Look the nine. Look the cue ball here. Too loose. Hmm. I think he was trying to gamble and run into the nine. That or even four rails around, kind of back into it. Yeah, I mean, he... It just can't get going, I feel like. It's just... It's not going his way so far. That's it, I guess. Yeah. I'm sure if he gets the speed on the, you know, like in his system, I'm sure he's going to play maybe two balls better. Well, that's what it is, right? It's playing the, those type of draw strokes from the seven to the eight. Oh, yeah. yeah he <laughs> almost missed the nine. He yeah. shook his head. Focused on the cue ball a little bit too much last minute there. Yeah, but it is Jovan Bustamante getting closer to that finish line. He's up 1-0, and I think it's fair to say Jesus is in real trouble here. Sure. Because Jovan has been solid. Like, he's really not been doing many crazy things. And if Jesus is going to make one or one or two of these kind of mistakes, it would be really tough to make something happen. It's only a race of four here to get to a shootout for him. Yeah, it's getting to the point in the match where he's going to have to make something happen in the next rack or two. Basmani doesn't have a break and run yet, and he's only made the side, the one in the side once. Made also the one in the corner. Right. I'm thinking he did get shape after, so I'm wondering maybe he had one break and run, but then again, 
the the way how he's been breaking, I you don't see him winning the tournament the way he's been breaking. Mm -hmm. He did finish, I believe he was quarterfinal or semifinal in the Michigan Open he did, Pro Beard yeah. Series this year. So we know, obviously, he's capable playing wise. But I'm just wondering, breaking wise, can he maybe step it up? That's what I'm wondering. Let's see if he does something different, or he's just gonna go a little bit less power. Try to just go all in on the one on the side. Yeah, he's been he's been favoring this right side side rail break. It's a good hit. Okay, he broke with a lot more power here, and, and there goes the three. This is the result. Yeah, great result. Making the three in the side perfect on the one. Two is in the open. The only thing I was looking at is. There was, yeah, I was going to say the seven did get tied up a little bit. Might be able to cheat the pocket, but it's not ideal. Yeah, he's going to have to hit it with speed to get back for the eight properly, so he'll probably be looking at a carom onto the nine off the seven. But I really like the way how he broke the balls in yeah. this case. Like, he really put a decent swing on that. Yep. Now he needs to get on the bottom side. I was going to say, he needs to get on the bottom side on the of the two. doesn't want to have the angle running towards the six. Played it nice, just barely making the one. Yeah. But it's also a shot because people are going to try to hold the cue ball. They're going to trick themselves aiming thicker. Mm -hmm. And he was doing the other way. He told himself, if I miss it, I'm going to hold the cue ball and hit the long rail first. This way, you, you, you can never have the speed wrong. Yep. So there is some small details in this. I like running into the 9-7 with good pace, like firm, because he needs to make something happen. Depends how well the carom lies. I feel like it's lying pretty good. The question on the carom is where will the 7 go? Or is he going to go off the 6 and run the 9-7? But then again, doing it with the, just the ball before the 7 is going to be more risky to get your next shot. Mm -hmm. I just... I mean, there is always I care. If you really want to, there is gonna be one. I just don't feel it's there. I think it's it, I think it lies great. It's just a question of how you're gonna control the seven. If he gets along the long rail, I do like it. Like where the cue ball is now, I think would be really close. Coming up short here. Oh, oh he's gonna tuck the cue ball behind the nine seven. Yeah, no big, doubt. Big safety wall. You can even move the nine away from the seven where you're able to pocket the seven. Yeah, if he can block the top long rail, just bring the six behind the eight as well. Yeah, just like that. He played the six a good way, though. So he didn't get the, the hook, or maybe he just got it, but he didn't get behind the nine seven, but he played a good six ball. The combo might not be quite wired. The nine might be going into the short rail a little bit. Have to get a close angle on that one. It's close. I feel there's... You could throw it a little bit, maybe. I was going to say, I think there's too much distance to throw it. Really? Okay. I, I felt, like in some kind of way, I look at it and go... So, for the viewers at home, when the balls are closer to each other, the spin actually goes the other direction. It's called throw. So, in this case, you would have to aim on the left side. You would think the, the, right, the nine is going to the short rail, but it's going to be throwing the ball out to the right. But this only applies when the balls are extremely close to each other. Yeah, and I actually got caught an overhead look, and it looks like there might be just a little too much room between it. But next time you guys have a chance to go to the pool room, you can actually try that shot. I mean, you can throw it, I don't know, it's hard to say, maybe like a half inch. You know, if it's a half inch out of the pocket, you can actually throw it a fair bit. And, and the lighter you hit it, the more it throws, which, yeah. I, which actually seems counterintuitive as well. But oh, he missed the ball. He missed the whole ball. Yeah, he was trying to get the save behind the 810, but I understand if he hits it thicker, the six is gonna gonna come off the rail and it's gonna be tougher to get the hook. Yeah, he had to hit it razor thin there. But yeah, you maybe he was rushed a little bit by the shot clock. Of course, we're using a 30 second shot clock, 25 second extension, so it could rush them a little bit. But I feel. Yeah, you cannot allow yourself to make a mistake like this. Yeah, he knew he couldn't throw it, so he went into it. Great result. Yeah, took a bit of a gamble. Sure. 
Hit it well, though. I am wondering. I think he has too much angle on the 7 to draw back for the 8 in the top left corner in this field. Just oh. Accept the long shot. Cue right. ball's running the wrong way here, too. Cue ball's running into the 10. This is a big tester. This is going to show me if he is up to win the second set or he's just going to shoot not feeling great. Biggest question for me here is the cue ball. He's he going to power draw out of it. I think off the... Oh, he what called a... a bank. That's He played there. all in on the bank. I don't know about this. The only thing I do know is Joe Venn is going to love this. Yeah. That's the kind of shots he plays, you know. He, he, he's an all-or-nothing player. And again, we're on a shot clock here. You know, he has to make quick decisions. The, the, the problem with the runout was getting from the 7 to the 8. But I do feel just he playing tried position for a long bank there, it's kind of an odd play, I right? I do feel he was trying to play it safety of mind, like missing it short, and it's kind of leave like a really difficult shot in the 8. I just think he... Yeah, it, it opened up too much on him, and he's left a really good shot. I think there was a two-way. Mm -hmm. He was trying to play a two-way. That's what I'm saying. Joe Venn catching seven a little bit thicker, but good shot on the nine. Nice speed. and Out to a good lead here in the second set. Two nothing. Bustamante cues a little bit from left to right. I don't know if you noticed that. He's, he, he cues up left on it almost every single shot and then throws his cue across to the right if he needs to or just stays on the left. Yeah, I just wonder. I'm wondering a lot of things. I don't know if you <laughs> heard this, but because some people, for some people, this is because of the dominant eye is how they look at the cue ball. And for some people, they just, in some kind of way, they taught themselves to aim completely different in the cue ball and then strike somewhere else. Like, uh, maybe, yeah, it's a coincidence, but Francisco Bustamante is not related to Joven. Does the same thing. Like, he's aiming low right in the cue ball and hitting top left. 100%. One yeah. of the purest strokes out there. Carlo Beato does it as well. Carlo Beato, same thing. Yeah. So it's, I am wondering sometimes if it's how they look at the cue ball. Or is it just technical? Is they're doing consistently the same thing, so it works? Yeah, it's the same as all strokes. If you're able to repeat it consistently, it's it can't be wrong, right? It's just if you were if you were to train a player from nothing, something that you would you would mention to avoid. Yeah, yeah. You're ov everybody's obviously trying to hit center ball. Yeah. It's just it sounds really easy, but in the game of pool, I don't know many people that actually hit the cue ball in the center when they need to hit the center. Mm -hmm. It sounds really easy, right? Just especially with the pressure, you know, people are not going to strike. The cue ball is smooth anymore, and they everybody's putting some spin. Oh, I like how he's hitting the break at this point. Making the three in the side, four in the corner. Shape on the one. Everything in the open. Standing up through it. Nice downward fall through. Timed it well. Yeah. He's found the break there. You know, he, he learned from what, he, what was happening in the first set and just decided to ramp up the speed a little bit and he's had two good results here in the second set yeah and he's going to be looking to go to the second round if he runs out here he's going to be on the hill early and I mean I'm just expecting him to be out here if he gets draws stay away from the six good shot unless he goes behind the five he's good yeah, he wasn't trying to play this. That's why he apologized. And it really turned out great. Yeah. He can run into the nine with top right. You just have to make sure you get closer to the ten. So the only thing you can do is hook yourself. Yeah, the only Because you need the angle coming to the six in the yeah, top of the table. Just going to want good angle here on the five. Yeah, Ooh, the, the, the way it was first. lying, it was this was going to happen a lot of the time. Oh, it will need it. Big shot. There's a three rail track around outside the seven. Huge stroke here. Nine out of ten speed. It's very well, th straight. There's two ways he can play. He can play with maximum left, really spinning the cue ball around the ten, opening up on the third rail, or he can stun the cue ball more. You see, he stunned the cue ball more. Nice hit. Oh, yep. 
Got perfect. Just a little straight on the six, but he's all right. I think he can go forward two rails. Even if you're straight, you can draw out. Yeah, there's going to be options to get towards the seven here. Just a little unlucky to be as straight as he is. There's also no scratch through the eight. You could also draw off the eight. Got a 50 yard line on this. You got a little bit in between. Yeah, I just wanted a little bit more left spin on that, open up the angle a little more, but he had to elevate. Still a good shot. You see, he's aiming very outside. And then he comes in a little bit more. Yeah, he doesn't. He didn't play that much spin, but he aims at it this way. Yeah, his stroke moves from left to right on every shot. Like even here, he's queuing center. Well, it's also most of the Philippine players they don't have the the knowledge technique-wise, but they get such a pure feel for the table and for the cue ball. That's where they outrun many players. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you know, as long as you get the job done, nobody <laughs> nobody is going to care where you strike the cue ball, right? So this to get on the hill. Joven Bustamante. <laughs> it looked a little bit <laughs> wide, but... <laughs> nah, he's good here. He's on the hill and... He's playing well, though. Throwing some breaking runs in now. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel... Uh, the same thing happened to him the first set to Jesus. He scratched on the three ball. He draw the cue ball on the side. And basically, that was the first set. Okay, sure, you make one mistake. But then now again, the second set, same thing. He didn't get from the s eight to the nine or the seven to the seven nine. Seven to the eight was a little funny and ended up having the long bank the eight. Yeah. And that is going to cost him the set, I feel like it. Just playing at such a high level here that even those half mistakes are are gonna add up to not not gonna add up the right way a lot of the time. And then for the viewers back home, maybe you can explain this to them. How would you compare? Let's say they are playing a race to nine or these two sets to four. Do you feel still if you would make the same two mistakes? Do you feel the scoreline would be close well, to the same? I, th I think it, it can go different in. De depending on the situation, but if you think about the overall score here, the, we're looking at he'd be down seven to two. Right? Yeah, I mean, so, making you know, these so two a, mistakes yeah. in a regular set is going to be the same score. So, so he's in big trouble going to, in a race to nine. Obviously, being down seven to two. He did cut the one a little bit more. Still made it. Two ball hooked. No, because there's many people that sometimes think, yeah, but with these sets, you know, I make one mistake, and but then still, if you would make one or two mistakes in a race to seven, eight, or nine, you're also down big time yep. on this level. Mm -hmm. So I think is It averages out in the end, for yeah. sure. Difficult push. Because you're always going to leave something difficult. I might try to kick and stick the cue all behind the nine. It's either soft over the short rail or draw over the long rail and try to stop it right there. Yeah, the I think he's going to bait... Uh, Atencio into trying that shot because it can go wrong. Well, also, he's just going to push Atencio to hopefully have him take it. You know, in right. this position, I would hope he's taking it. And if he doesn't, okay, I know I have to make something happen. He gave it back quickly. Yeah, especially being down 3 0. I understand he's not taking the risk and leaving him wide open. If he got the side rail here, that's a Ooh, great shot. He got he a did. great hook. Yeah. Also, the, you see the bottom long rail. I don't think he's able to catch the rail first on the two. He can get into the short rail here if he wants to bridge over the nine. He is probably going to be wanting to play more speed. And then elevating over the nine is going to be the cue ball jumping. He's playing one rail over this. It is such a small ball. Good shot, though. Hit the right he side of it. Oh, look at the cue ball. Oh. You know, I actually feel he hit it. He couldn't have hit it any better, no. I feel like. To be fair, he's had a couple small bad rolls in the set as well. Yeah, he's already, he's already removed his, cl uh, his uh, glove. Yeah. He, he knows. You know, it's just two mistakes. Things are going. And Bustamani's taking full advantage of every, every mistake and he's Cha played well. Change the break and now a couple break runs in. It's so tough to beat a player like this.
everything's lying pretty good here. Just got to get the proper sides of the ball, move the, move the cue ball naturally. I think I would be going in between the 4 or 5, guaranteeing always a look on the 4. It's a little funny here, but I think he's straight enough to draw back over to the right side of the table and play the 5 in the bottom left. Add a little more angle, still manageable. Natural angle back to the middle here. Yeah, you would expect him to be out here also. The balls are laying pretty nice, especially 9-10. Like, there's no traveling to the 10 ball, so just this to get on the 7. Could go two rails, could go with just top spin with a hair of right, one rail back out. Yeah, he's just played a good set here. Tensio's going to have to regroup. I mean, we're still early in the tournament, so he can go along the loser bracket. He's played a good event last week in the International Open, Jesus. I think he was finishing, what is it, last 16, top 8, something like this, so... I feel there's a lot more in the tank for him. Sure. Next goal will be to make it back to the redraw station, or re redraw portion, which will be the final 32. Here's Bastamane with the final 10 ball. Okay, thanks for joining us. Yeah, this was uh, was a good match actually. Yeah. Joven beats Jesus Atencio 2-0. In pretty decent form. Fashion, yeah, yeah, played well. So this was Eric Hoylefsen and Tim De Reuter. And we would love to see you guys back in as soon as possible probably. So yeah, we'll, we'll see you then. Soon. Thank you.